Good morning, or afternoon, or whatever time of day it is as you watch this videotape. Today is the first weekend of Christmas, and we're grateful that you are celebrating um, and worshiping with us here at Lakeview Lutheran Church. I don't have a lot of announcements, but just uh, to remind you that next weekend, on, Jan on January 3rd, the service will be live streamed, so I want to encourage you to uh, find that link. It will be sent out repeatedly. It will be on Facebook, on the church Facebook page, and then you're able to click on that link and join us for worship at 9 a.m. on January 3rd. That will be my last weekend here at Lakeview, and so there are several um, things that will happen in the service because the bishop's office will be here to send me on my way into retirement. Then, so you're aware, for the remainder of January, Pastor Mary Farmer, a former pastor of this congregation, will be here to, as a uh, supply pastor for those three or four weekends. I can't remember exactly what, how many there are. And then on February 1st, your interim, who has already been assigned to this congregation from the bishop's office, will um, begin his responsibilities here as a full-time pastor. So we look forward to uh, some, some excitement, um, some changes, and some um, hearing from different people along the way. So those are some things in the upcoming weeks to keep in mind. With that, I will sit back and be quiet as we prepare our hearts this day uh, for worship during Lent's prayer. Christmas Eve gospel reading. 
And we end that story typically with those familiar and those wonderful words uh, that talk about how Mary treasured and pondered all the things that happened that night in the manger in her heart. And then um, the shepherds left the manger and they were glorifying and praising God and telling others everything that they had seen. It's a great story. You're so familiar with it. Um, but the, the thing is, it ends there usually, and we don't get the rest of the story in the second chapter of Gospel. But this weekend, on the first weekend of Christmas, we get the rest of the story, and we get to meet Simeon and Anna. Now, remember that in Luke's Gospel story, there are no magi, there are no kings that come from the east or afar or wherever we think they come. There is no evil King Herod who kills children. There is, in Luke's Gospel, there's no angel who appears in a dream to Joseph to tell him to take his family to Egypt so that they will be safe. All of those things are part of Matthew's Gospel story. The Gospel that does not have a story about Jesus being born in a manger. Matthew's Gospel has no manger. But in Luke, <clears throat> we are introduced to Simeon and Anna. That's what comes next. And I think that these two people should actually be a part of everybody's home nativity set. You see, a typical nativity set, like you probably have sitting in your house somewhere right now, is a mix of both Luke's Gospel and Matthew's Gospel. Um, in that nativity set, whoever produced your nativity set, tried to put two stories together. And then they still didn't get it right. Because neither Gospel, Matthew or Luke, talks about any animal, animals or any angels present at a manger when Jesus was born. There's nothing in the Gospel stories that talk about lowing cattle. That comes from the familiar hymn, Away in a Manger. Neither Gospel tells us that Jesus was born in a barn or even in a building. He was just born in a manger, and if any of you were ever on a farm, you know that there are plenty of mangers just out in wide open space. Neither story has an innkeeper. There is no donkey. And the Magi, or the kings that we find in Matthew's Gospel, never even come to a birth. They never come to a manger. If you read the story correctly, they show up at a house where they find Mary holding Jesus on her lap, and it's probably about two years later. So I'm not sure why it's important for nativity scenes to include all of those things, but never Simeon and Anna. And I think that's too bad, because Simeon and Anna are both very important people in the birth narrative of Jesus, our Messiah. So today, and we're going to get to the reading in a minute here, but I'm prepping you so you know what we're going to read. Today we're going to learn that Joseph and Mary were very well aware of the Jewish Torah laws. The Torah, the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, or the first five book books of what some call the Old Testament. They knew those laws. In Exodus, they knew that in Exodus, God told Moses to consecrate to the Lord all the firstborn. Whatever is the first to open the womb of human beings or animals belongs to God. And in Leviticus, we're told that after a woman bore a male child, she would be unclean for seven days. Then on the eighth day, the child would be, would be circumcised, and the mother would then go into 33 days without touching anything holy or entering the sanctuary. When those 33 days ended, she would then complete her purification period by taking an animal to the priest, and the, animal would, or the priest would then offer the animal as a burnt offering to God. And that's the story we have today. That's where we are today. The Holy Family has gone up into Jerusalem from Bethlehem after Jesus' birth so that Mary could conclude her purification according to the laws. That's the purification process is what gets this Holy Family into the city so that we get to meet Simeon and Anna. 
So I want to read to you from Luke chapter 2, continuing on from what you heard on Christmas. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout. He was looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him up in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory for your people Israel. And the child's mother and father were amazed at what was being said about Jesus. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce their own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then, as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came, she began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong and was filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now why aren't Simeon and Anna, two elderly people, or mature people, as Marlene Creaser would tell me, why are they important? Well, first, this story helps us see that the laws were kept by the parents of Jesus. They understood and they abided by the Jewish traditions and the Jewish laws. And then, through the voice of Simeon, we can see that the law was fulfilled. The law was kept by Mary and Joseph. The law was fulfilled by Simeon. Simeon tells us that the Holy Spirit had promised him that he would not die until he saw the Lord's Messiah. It's Simeon who announced who this baby was. In Simeon's failing eyesight at his advanced age, he was able to see salvation in Jesus. This child, Simeon said, was the salvation that God prepared for all people. All people. The Israelites and the Gentiles. And that's what's really important. Immediately, Simeon recognized that Jesus was not just for his people, the people of Israel, but Jesus was for the world. That's actually what the Magi do over in the Matthean account of Jesus' birth. And then came Anna. She came in and she confirmed everything that Simeon was saying. Anna immediately recognized who Jesus was. And she began to praise God and to share what she witnessed with anyone who was seeking redemption. 
She knew that this baby could redeem those who desired to be redeemed. Anna, therefore, provides us with perhaps the very first model of how faithful followers of Christ should behave. Just like Anna, we are called to praise and we are called to share the story. So Simeon and Anna are two very important models for anyone who follows Jesus and who understands the salvation of God which Jesus brings to us in his birth. They encourage us then to wait with patience. They encourage us to embrace the baby and they encourage us to joyously go out and tell this good news to other people. That's why Simeon and Anna should be in your home nativity set. So if you've got nothing to do for the rest of this week, perhaps you can do some molding, modeling out of clay or paper mache and build a Simeon and Anna for your nativity set at home. It'd be a good project for many of you. And when Mary and Joseph were finished that day, they returned to their home in Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus grew and he became strong, and the favor of God was upon him. Amen.
Holy God, Holy Spirit, you inspired Anna and Simeon in their old age to praise your promise and presence in the infant Jesus. Inspire us as we grow older to recognize your presence and nourish your gifts in children, infants, and youth. Make our churches and homes safe and welcoming spaces to let the children come. May all who gather, without exception, meet and trust in your love. And we thank you for people of any age whose faith is not eroded by doubt, broken by adversity, or soured by cynicism. We give thanks for everyone whose faith revives our own spirits, warms our hearts, renews our hopes, and helps us see that Christ, born in Bethlehem, and who will come again. Now send us like Simeon into the world with joy in our hearts, because we have met Jesus. Send us like Anna into the world and into this upcoming new year, praising you and sharing the good news with anyone who seeks redemption. Fill us with wisdom, and may your favor rest upon us. Amen. And we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Depart in peace, according to God's word. Your eyes have seen salvation, which God prepared for all people. Thanks be to God. Amen.